God, forgiven, loved, and free, the life of Jesus to recall, in love laid down for me, the Spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such friendship better known, alive among us here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today we celebrate Jesus' gift of himself to us in the Eucharist, the living bread by which we are nourished. Gathered together as the body of Christ, let us be mindful of our calling to be Eucharist for one another. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of the Eucharist, you left us the memorial of your passion. Deepen our reverence for the mystery of your body and blood, that we may experience within us the fruit of your redemption. You who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, 
has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The people quarreled among themselves, saying, How can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unless, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. What a truly tantalizing liturgy we celebrate today. By tantalizing, I don't mean either abundantly satisfying or mouth-wateringly delicious. Word images that might be suggested by the prayers and readings dished up for us on this feast of the body and blood of Christ. No, I mean tantalizing in its original root sense. The word comes to us from Greek mythology. Do you remember the story of Tantalus? Tantalus was one of Zeus's best-loved mortals. Zeus became Tantalus's patron and showered him with many exquisite favors. Eventually, however, Tantalus's greediness got the better of him. He wound up betraying Zeus and grossly offending the other gods. As punishment, he was condemned to suffer eternally the pangs of hunger and thirst, and in the most devilishly imaginative way. He was made to stand in the middle of a lake with a bountiful fruit tree just overhead. But whenever he reached for a piece of fruit, the wind would lift the branch up a tiny bit higher, just out of reach. And whenever he bent down to slake his blazing thirst, the waters of the lake would recede just out of range. Tantalus was doomed forever to crave the nourishment he could clearly see, but which was beyond his grasp. That's what tantalize means. It means to stir up someone's hope, only to frustrate it in the end. That's what makes today's Mass so tantalizing. In a few minutes, you'll see the food and drink that you crave, the Eucharist, but to feed on it still eludes you. Yes, yes, it's true. At Mass, we are fed at two tables, the table of the Word and the table of the Eucharist. Fortunately, even amid COVID restrictions, we continue to be nourished by God's life-giving word. Nevertheless, it's not as satisfying as word and sacrament together, is it? And I grieve with you for your unsatisfied hunger and thirst for communion. I wonder, however, if this current privation doesn't perhaps invite us to a more expansive understanding of the sacrament. Have you ever heard of that extraordinary Belgian nun, Sœur Emmanuel, Sister Emmanuel? Although she's practically unknown in this country, she was revered as a national treasure both in her native Belgium and her adopted France. She died in 2008, just days before her 100th birthday. 
As a young nun, Emmanuel was sent to teach in schools run by her religious congregation in Turkey, Tunisia, and Egypt. After 40 years in the classroom, Emmanuel felt tugged in a new direction. In 1971, when she was already 62 years old, she received permission to move to Cairo and to live among the poorest of the poor in Ezbet el Nahal, a slum built on an enormous garbage dump. The slum residents would travel in their donkey carts each day throughout the neighborhoods of Cairo to collect garbage and to bring it back to their slum, where they would sort and recycle it, but also scavenge through it to find whatever they might sell to earn a few pennies. Sister Emmanuel lived in a one-room hut in that foul slum for 22 years, helping to establish schools, medical clinics, and playing fields for the children. After living for several years alone in that slum, Sister Emmanuel stumbled upon a convent of Coptic Orthodox nuns. She introduced herself and asked if she might visit from time to time for a few days of retreat. The Coptic nuns already knew of Sister Emmanuel and of her work, and they enthusiastically welcomed her. But when Emmanuel joined the nuns for liturgy, the priest refused her communion because she was not a Copt. The other nuns were horrified. The next time Emmanuel joined them for liturgy, not one of the 30 Coptic nuns received communion either. They later explained to her that their abstention from the Eucharist was their communion with her. What an amazing insight. Those religious women recognize that the Eucharist is not just about someone's personal spiritual nourishment. Above all, it's an expression of our communion with Christ, as St. Paul reminds us in today's second reading. But it's also an expression of our communion with each other. That act of solidarity among the nuns, depriving themselves voluntarily of the Eucharist so as to be in communion with Emmanuel in her tantalizing moment of privation, was a profound recognition of the true significance of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is not, in the first instance, our yearning for intimacy with God. Rather, it's God's wholehearted longing for intimacy with us. And the intensity of God's passion for us cannot be frustrated either by canonical restriction or by lack of access to the consecrated elements of bread and wine. That episode of Sister Emmanuel and the Coptic nuns has come to mind several times in these days when you and most other Catholics have been sorely deprived of communion. From conversations with some of you, I know how difficult this absence of communion has been. One parishioner described it as a constant gnawing hunger. Another plaintively remarked, it's not just that I want the Eucharist, I need the Eucharist. Nevertheless, I wonder if there isn't perhaps an invitation hidden in our temporary deprivation, an invitation to practice solidarity with those many Catholics who never or only rarely experience the joy of receiving communion, whether because they live in a place where there is a scarcity of priests or a feeling of estrangement from the church on their part, or their belief that some aspect of their life renders them ineligible. I'm sure you know more than a few such people. Why not hold those people and their aching hungers in your heart during this Mass today? Try to empathize with their hunger for the Eucharist, but also their hunger for forgiveness or acceptance or human intimacy. Your hunger for the Eucharist will be satisfied sooner or later, but what about theirs? Why not ask God this morning to satisfy their hungers 
two. And let us now renew our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for the needs of all the world. That the church become one body, healed of all division, and work tirelessly towards God's reign of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. That during this time of separation from the body and blood of Christ, we not only hunger for the Eucharist, but grow in hunger for the justice that the Eucharist proclaims. We pray to the Lord. That our nation and our church can turn away from all violence, hate, racism, and discrimination to work toward reconciliation and peace among all people. We pray to the Lord. that we grow in solidarity with those who can never come to the Eucharistic table because of lack of sacramental ministers, prohibitions against the faith, or illness in advanced age. We pray to the Lord. That the circle around our table grow ever wider, including people of every color, sexual orientation, and status. We pray to the Lord. that the dead, especially those who are killed because of the color of their skin and those who have died of COVID-19, might enjoy life forever at the banquet feast of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, your son Jesus gives us the gift of his body and blood. Hear our prayers that one day we might share forever at your heavenly banquet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of God's holy church. Gracious God, bestow on your church the blessings of unity and peace, 
of which these offerings are the sacramental sign. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his disciples, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word.
but spirit led must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead across the world across the street the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for daily bread and never live until they die then let the servant church arise a caring church that longs to be a partner in Christ's sacrifice and clothed in Christ's humanity. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life.